Got a coin for a cup of tea, Governor? Oh, God bless you, Governor. Thank you. <laughs> Got a coin for a cup of tea, Governor? Got a coin for a cup of tea? Oh, what about this then, eh? Oh, blimey, look at that. <laughs> oh. No denying it. You've got the finest velvet plush rocker in Charleston. No doubt, Mr. Stokey, but my wife is still going to scout me for getting it just the same. Why? You said she's been wanting a chair like that. Well, you don't exactly know Rebecca. What she wants and what she thinks she ought to have are two entirely different things. Here, will throw some meal sacks around that. Where'd you get it? Made it. Would you let me blow it once? Keep it if you like. Couldn't do that. Then why not? It's mine to give, and I can always whittle myself another one when I got need of it. Well then, if you say so, sure do thank you. My name's Willie. Mine's Israel, Israel Boone. Now that chair now. If you've got a bit of line, I'll lash it to the deck so she'll ride without a quiver. Sure. <laughs> Sick or something? Look here. Could I get in the back of your wagon? I gotta hide somewhere just for a bit, please. Parker of His Majesty's Royal Marines at your service, sirs. We have reason to suspect that there is a mutineer from His Majesty's ship, the Molly Shan, hiding hereabout. In accordance with Article 27 of the Treaty between the British Empire and the United States of America, we request permission to search these premises. Just see you keep your hands out of my pickle barrel. Well, goodbye, Mr. Stokey. I just hope on my next trip to Charleston I won't have to bring this rocker back to you. Oh, all Mrs. Boone has to do is sit in it once. Is that your wagon, sir? I think I'd like to search it. No, Pa, don't let him. Well, now, son, it won't hurt anything to let him have a look. Now, step aside, boy. But I got everything in place. It all tied up good. Please, Pa. Well, Israel, you uh, have done a good job. It would be a shame to have to do it all over again. Sorry, Lieutenant. Do I understand that you're defying the stipulations of the treaty between your country and mine? Well, now, Lieutenant, I'm not so sure your treaty necessarily covers this wagon. It will put these behind the seat. We've got a long way to go. Lieutenant Parker, by Mr. Stokey. My regards to Mrs. Bone, Daniel. Hurry up, Pa. Please. <laughs> Roar this fighting this man 
the frontier ever knew. Oh, Daniel Boone was a man, yes, a big man, with an eye like an eagle and as tall as a mountain was he. Oh, Daniel Boone was a man, yes, a big man, and he fought for America to make all Americans free. Daniel Boone was a doer, what a dream come a truer was he. Daniel Boone, Daniel Boone. All right, son. Don't you think it's about time you told me what this is all about? Whoa. Figuring on heading, son. He wants to go with us, Pa. Now, you let him talk, Israel. He might want to go back to Charleston. He doesn't want to go back, Pa. I know. He wants to go with us. Please, Pa. Well, if you're going to go with us, you better climb on up so we can get started. Thank you, Governor. Mm -hmm. Good and easy, Becky? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, no, I could uh, swear that chair was rocking when I stepped in. I figured you'd been trying it out. Well, I wasn't. I just must have bumped into it as I crossed the floor, that's all. But I did not sit in it. Oh, come on, Becky. Try it. Sit in it just once. No. All right, then I'll sit. Ah, oh, Daniel Boone! Now, you know we can't afford a luxury like that. It'd be quite a spell for it. Take it back to Charleston. Well, you're just going to have to get it out of my sight, then. Cabin's the safest and driest place. It might ride out there in the lane, too. Daniel Boone. Now, I'm a weak woman. And it just isn't fair to set a temptation like that right in front of my fire. Now, Becky, you are the finest temptation fighter in all of Kentucky, if not the whole world. Now, if you don't want to sit and rock in that chair, you won't. So, now, you just stop threatening. That Willie's doing a right good job of patching the roof. That's one chore I can stop putting off. Thanks to Willie, there are a number of chores you can stop putting off. He's already repaired the drawers in the high voice so they don't stick anymore. He's shored up the spring house, and he's built three new shelves. I don't think I've ever seen anybody quite so handy. Becky, does he ever talk to you at all? The only person he ever talks to is Israel. Most he ever said to me was, thank you, Governor, and that's when we were leaving Charleston. Something sure got his tongue tied up. Dan, do you suppose he is the mutineer those Marines were looking for? I don't know, Becky. Maybe I'd be more honest if I were to say I... I don't want to know. Yeah, he 
you came down that line like a ruddy orangutan. Oh, you'll get faster, though, uh, when you get your growth. When I get my growth, I'm faster than you are now! <laughs> you could be a four-top man with a bit of practice. What's a four-top man? Well, he means a four-top saw. Hey. You mean like on a ship? That's right. Well, you know all about ships, don't you? What's wrong? I can't say. Wouldn't know how to tell you. What's it like, Israel? Living in a house? I don't know. You know it. I don't know. For the simple reason that I never lived in one. Must be grand, all right. I reckon. Don't suppose I ever thought about it. I thought a lot about it. Just now I thought, wouldn't I like to build myself a little house? Out there. Just live in it. Why don't you? There's an old cabin you could fix up. You'd like it, I know you would. Aye. But there's no chance for it. How do you know? Listen, why don't you talk to my pa about it? Ask him. Why don't you? Look here, do you think he might step out here and have a word with me? Sure, I'll go get him. No, don't hurry him now. He's having his tea. Pa drinks coffee. I'll go get him. common amount of work for me. Well, you might say I... It's work I know how to do. You see, Mr. Boone, I served as carpenter's mate on His Majesty's ship Molly Sean. I'm sure you must have heard of the ship Molly Sean, the terrible mutiny and all. Well, it seems I recall a Marine lieutenant in Charleston saying something about it. Aye. Well, it's me the Marines are after. There was a mutiny on the Molly Sean and I was in it. When they catch me, I'll hang for sure. How old are you, Willie? Don't know for sure, sir. Well, what'd you do in this mutiny? Kill somebody or...? Oh, I'll give you my word. I never raised my hand against a soul. Well, in that case, what do they want to hang you for? Because I didn't do all in my power to stop them. The law says I'm as guilty as the worst of them. Well, could you have stopped them, Willie? Oh, no, sir. They had knives uh, and guns, and most of them in drink. It was horrible. They chopped up the captain and threw him overboard. And the purser, bosun, and the midshipman said they'd give me some of the same if I didn't stand my hammock out their way. Without you and Israel, I'd be properly hung and gibbeted by now. I want to stay here, Mr. Boone. But would you let me? Willie, it's not for me to say. But it is a free country. Aye, it is. Then you wouldn't turn me in? No. But if the people here should find out what I've just told you... Well, the folks here in Boonesboro are not so interested in the man's past. But they're more interested in what he's going to do right here and now. Oh, bless you, sir. There could be no doubt what I intend to do right here and now. I intend to find a solid piece of timber and lay the keel for my own little house. Lay a keel for a house? You're going to have to excuse me, Governor. It's going to take me a while to get the salt water out of me talk. Clean. You like that? All I 
we're doing around here is just dust and clean. I get sweet. Get it. Same old well, I'll say one thing for you. You never sneak up on a man. Always hear you coming. Willie, how's that new house of yours coming? The deck head's secure. Deck head's secure, huh? Aye. Hmm. And the Boones have promised to come and have a look see this evening. My very first visiting, you might say. I was wondering if you come too. Well, I'll say one thing. There ain't a soul in this settlement that ain't curious as to what's going on out there. I would be proud to come and have a look-see. In that case, I'll take a jug of your best rum. A jug of my best rum. Jug, my best rum. Miss Silver Street paid me for making her a porch seat and a spindle chair. Uh, Willie, I've uh, never known you to take a drink before. No, sir. And very likely you never will. If you were Mr. Boone this evening, when you see my little house, you may have need for a drop. Then, too, it's good to keep in the cupboard. Now that I'm settled in, maybe folks will come and visit me once in a while. Well, you can count on that. <laughs> Seems to me, next to Dan Boone himself, you got more friends than anyone in Boonesboro. <laughs> Beautiful. And mighty comfortable looking, too. And that chair you made us, he and I are always arguing over who's going to sit in it most. <laughs> <laughs> Fine workmanship, Willie. Oh, Israel, get down from there. <laughs> <gasps> Wish I had a bed like this. <laughs> I expect it might make it a bit easier to dust under. That's not where the ship captains have them. It's so they can sleep on an even keel even when the sea runs high. Right, Willie? <laughs> right, Israel. <laughs> Dad, I think now might be the proper time. All right. <laughs> Willie, uh, this is not new, but at least it's serviceable. At least that's what Cincinnati says. Well, it's got a trigger. <laughs> at any rate, it's from all of us, and, uh, well, we just think you ought to have one. <laughs> I've got just the place for it. I was going to get one as soon as I could afford it anyway. Would you like me to shoot it sometime? <laughs> of course. Should I warm up your team up? No, thank you, Willie. Mrs. Overstreet? No, thank you. Sits in that us? Oh, well, since how it's my own, I, I will have. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> Uh, I tell you, I just can't get over how you put this place together all by yourself. Yes, sir, it's just as neat and clean as a captain's cabin on a fine ship. <laughs> a fine job. Willie, you have been more than hospitable. But I think it's time for us to go. Right, Now, yeah. thank you all for stopping in. Oh. See you later, Willie. Good night, Willie. Yeah, much obliged, Willie. Good, Good night, night, Willie. Thank Good you. Good night, Mr. Thank, thank you, Mr. Willie. Willie, uh, I know you're proud of your house with good cause. I just want you to know that we're all proud of you and with good cause. Good night. Cuts herself up like a landlubber, but it's you, all right. <laughs> William Crawford. Oh, nice snug little berth you have here, ain't you? Very snug indeed. Ooh. Well, where are your manners, baby lad? You gonna stand there gawking while a tired old shipmate gets faint on his feet, eh? I see I'll have to help myself, won't I? Oh. 
Who are you anyway? Who am I anyway? My name's George Perkins. Bosun's mate on the good ship Surprise, but I swallowed the anchor for shore duty. I see you look scared out of your wits. I haven't brought the British Marines with me, if that's what you're thinking. How do you know my name's Willie Crawford? Ah. If it is my name. Carpenter's mate, William Crawford, serving on His Majesty's ship Molly Sean, formerly. Oh, have a sit, baby boy, have a sit. I wouldn't arm you for anything in the world. Just an old shipmate, paying a friendly visit. You know, oh, I rode down here with a preacher, man. He hadn't got a drop in his wagon. I'll tell you something, baby lad, I'd sooner sail around Cape Horn in a longboat than I would make that voyage overland from Charleston Harbour. And why wouldn't old sailing man like yourself be coming way out here to Boonesboro? <laughs> Well, I ain't a Molly Sean mutineer who doesn't like the thought of hanging from the yard arm. I had no pine that mutiny. I believe you, lad. I believe you. I had to do what they told me. And what did they tell you? They told me to play my flute so they could dance on the quarter deck. Ha, ha, ha. Play your flute, eh, so they can dance. <laughs> I'll tell you something, baby lad. I'd have gone my way in Charleston that day, only I had to stop for a... For a, for a mug of grog, and then, you know, I suddenly heard you piping a sailor's tune, and I stopped to listen, and then the sun caught that little bit of silver, and, oh, baby lad, I fancied it. Of course, I knew you were hiding from the blooming Marines, but I fancied it. I still fancy it. Well, you got your name cut right into it, William Crawford. You've had the devil's own luck, you a wanted man, running from the crown. It's a miracle you haven't had to trade that silver chain for a length of hemp. <laughs> How did a bucko like you get a piece of silver like that, eh? I don't know. I always had it, ever since I can remember. How come you didn't turn me in that day in Charleston? I expect there's a price on me, Ed. Oh, might be a small reward, but not much. Uh, not one of the leaders, are you? <coughs> so why should I do a thing like that? Nobody wants to be an informer. Unless, of course, they has to. Blimey, where does a sailor like you get all these victuals and rum so far from the sea, eh? I do work for the folks in the settlement. Make something they need or mend something that's broke. I get along. Yeah, I can see that. What more can a man want than a warm cabin and plenty to eat and drink, eh? Blimey, a real captain's berth. Oh, 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 I've always wanted to sleep like a ship's master. Oh, 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 oh. Ah. your mouth unless it's open to say good morning, Mr. Perkins. You pinched it. What's that? Can't hear what you say. My good luck piece, you pinched it. Oh, pinched it. What a thing to say. Oh, what a thing to say. I borrowed it, that's all. Plain to see baby boy did. Brought you some good fortune. Thought it might do the same for me. How'd you get it off me? Without me knowing? Well, you're a baby, aren't you? And you sleep like a baby. I sleep pretty well myself, but I sleep ever so lightly. When a man's lived with murdering cutthroats as long as I have, he learns to sleep with one eye open. Oops! <coughs> and a knife in his hand. <laughs> oh, well, you just have a little bit of a 
Eye opener and a bite to eat. And then perhaps take a look at Boomsbury. Oh, blimey, this dog's empty. And you'll be better off without it. It's rum what keeps me on an even keel. I'll thank you to fetch me a fresh jug. I don't have another. Oh, I know. I had a look in your galley while you were sleeping. Even the poorest and meanest cows have better stores. Well, I eat supper where I work mostly. It's the way some folks have of paying for the job. There's biscuits in the bread barge. Biscuit, I ate my last biscuit when I left the sea, thank you. Come on, we get something proper for a man to eat and something proper to wash it down with. It costs money, you know. Have you got any coins? Well, not just at the moment, no, but I did have. I think it must have been about six years ago I had half a crown. But for the life of me, I can't remember what became of it. <laughs> Cincinnatus? I didn't hear you tootle on your flute. I need to put in some stores. Well, you come to the right place, you might add the only place. This is a friend of mine, Perkins. George Perkins. How'd you do? Howdy. Well, I expect you'll be needing some lard and flour and peas. And... I need a good deal of things, Cincinnati. I mean, I don't have any coins in my pocket. Well, you'll get them soon enough. As far as I'm concerned, your credit's just as good as gold. Ha, ha, ha. There you are, Willie boy. What did I tell you, eh? Oh, before you get Willie's stores together, pour me a mug of your best, will you, mate? I, uh, don't recall having seen you around in Boonsboro before, Mr. Perkins. I haven't been around these parts before. You, uh, just passing through, or...? plan to settle down and stay a while. Well, I might stay and then I might not, you know. Willie and I have to discuss the situation. One might say that it's not my decision to make, no. It's going to be up to Willie. <laughs> Blimey, ain't that your benefactor from Charleston? Mr. Boone's boy, Israel. Where have you been, Willie? I've been looking all over for you. Don't you remember? You said you'd take me fishing today. Willie ain't got no time to do any fishing, so you might as well get on your way. Who are you? Now then, don't start being lofty with me, my boy. I thought I told you to clear off. And look alive, Willie boy. I'm parched and empty. you up, Israel. You've been mopish and out of spirits for days on end. You must be coming down with something. Oh, no, ma'am. I'm not coming down with anything. Well, it's unnatural for a boy your age to be indoors all the time. You should be outdoors playing. When do you think Paul will be coming home? Oh, when he's out hunting with Mingo, it's hard to tell. A week, two, maybe. Israel! I'm going to have your father return that chair to Mr. Stokey as soon as he gets back. Why don't you go over and see Willie? Every time I go over there, that Perkin man runs me off. Maybe you could get him to come over here. Got plenty of chores that are just waiting. You tell him that I need him. Well, I reckon I could try. Good jam. 
I haven't had gooseberry jam since I can't remember. Yeah, Willie boy, I'll give you a bit. Come on, Willie. You have a taste, baby. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, I say. I say, don't get angry. And Molly Sean can't afford to be angry, especially with someone who knows who he is and can get in touch with the Marines at Charleston. Well, why don't you just do it? Turn me in and I'm done with it. <laughs> Even an old sea dog like me knows that a wise man doesn't kill the cow. He milks it. Oh, now, 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 Willie. Come and have a sip, baby boy. Let's talk it over and you'll find things aren't so bad as they seem. Sit down now, Willie, Willie. Let's regard this as a business proposition, shall we? You got something I want, a fair little cabin, enough to uh, stave off my hunger and thirst. Now, that's not asking much in return for me keeping my mouth shut, is it? I promise I'll do that, provided you stick to your end of the bargain, of course. My fair little cabin is failed. And I'm in debt for your, your rum and your fancy vittles. I've a good mind just to run off again. If you got a brain in your head, you'll stay here with me and eat what I've got to say. Listen, there ain't a port, there ain't a vessel what's not watching for you. And they'll never stop. Till the end of your days, they'll be after you. Besides, you wouldn't like to get your friend, Mr. Boone, into trouble. Would you? Lily? It's me. Israel. Are you home? She has some chores for you. That is, if you have a mind to work this morning. There'll be dumplings for supper, Will. Won't you come? Well, I don't know. Maybe I can. I'll wait for you. Out here. No. You go on home. Tell your ma I'll be along. When I can. <clears throat> Mrs. Boone wants me to do some work for her. Yes, so I heard. And she'll pay for your labour with dumplings. Ha! You can't buy much rum with dumplings, baby boy. You know, it's just as well I turned up when I did. These landlubbers beginning to take advantage of you. If you do a day's work, you ought to get a man's pay for it, not just doled out a ration of mush and turnips. There's little money to be had here. <laughs> There's little of anything to be had here. There's blooming places like hell in the doldrums. That's why I think we ought to be clearing out. This is my home. The only one I ever had. I worked hard on this place. Then you can work hard on another place, can't you? In a more civilized neighborhood where there's coin to be had and something for a man of my sensibilities to do of an evening. I wasn't a mean old hungry bear. It's me like you were thinking some mighty heavy thoughts. Anything wrong I should know about? It's Willie, Pa. There's this new man named Perkins come to stay with him. Well, he says he's a friend, but he's not like Willie at all. All this cussing and drinking and, well, 
ever since there's been no fishing and hunting. Every time I go over there, he barely talks to me. What do you reckon's wrong, Pa? Hold on, son. You say Willie has a friend who's come to live with him? That's Mr. Daniel Boone, ain't it? How do you do? I'm Mr. Perkins, Mr. George Perkins. Mr. Perkins? It's not often a seafaring man finds his way this far back into the wilderness. How do you know I'm a seafaring man, eh? Just how do you know I'm not? Oh, well, I mean, nobody goes down to the sea with the eye of a beast on their backs, do they? You know, if I'm going to be a land lover, I must, I must be properly outfitted like I must dress like you, Willie and Mr. Boone. I mean, I'll tell you, sir, you know, Willie's very smart with the needle, Mr. Bo oh, Mr. Boone, come over here and have a little drink, won't you? Oh, what's wrong with me? Oh, oh never felt like this before. It's the drink, that's all. He'll come around in a bit. He knows I'm a Molly Shaw. He saw me hiding your wagon that day in Charleston. And as long as you give him food and drink, he'll keep a bridle on his tongue. That was the bargain. Well, that's not much of a bargain, Willie. It's plain to see he's got you between finger and thumb. Look at this mess. Look what he's done to you. There's no help for it. Not as long as you keep him in food and drink. Just suppose you were to disappear for a spell. More than likely, you'd give up and go away. No, sir. He'd tell how you bought me here and all. I could get you in an awful lot of trouble. Well, I'm not exactly a stranger to trouble, Willie. You saved my life, Mr. Boone. Gave me my little house and my friends. I'd sooner hang than bring you to grief. Son, now get your breath and tell me. Those Marines, Pa. Those British Marines. After Willie. They're at the fort. Well, now, who told you there were Marines at the fort? Nobody told me. I saw him. Same one that tried to get in our wagon in Charleston. He said the story asking Cincinnati about Willie. Well, what'd Cincinnati say to him? I didn't wait to find out. If I know Cincinnati, they know less now than when they ask him. It's likely they'll come looking for me. Do you think you can get back to our house before they get there? Sure, Pa. All right, I want you to go and tell your mom that if they come looking for me, that she's to delay them as long as she can. You understand? All right, now, son, make haste. to see Mr. Boone. Oh, won't you come in? Dan isn't here right now, but he'll be back most any moment. Well, won't you sit down and make yourselves comfortable? I've got lots of nice hot tea here. <sighs> On your feet, Sergeant. Yes, sir! Mrs. Boone, we'd hoped that Mr. Boone could tell us where to find William Crawford. I'm sorry Dan isn't here, but if you'd just sit down and wait. Could you tell us where to find William Crawford? If you'd just sit down for a spell, maybe you'd like some nice cool cider. I know you must be tired. No, thank you. Well, if you'd just sit and wait for my husband. I'm afraid it would be a long wait. I suspect your husband is with William Crawford. Are you 
just going to stand there and wait for them? I can't run anymore. They'll never stop hunting for me. And there'll always be a George Perkins. You just lost heart, Willie. Got a good mind to take you someplace till they give up looking for you. I'd only turn myself in. I swear it. Willie! Where are you, Willie? Piper's the tune, Willie. We're becalmed again. There'll be no more tunes, Mr. Perkins. Get out of here so I can clear out my house before the Marines come and get me. Marines? You stay where you are and tell me what you said about the Marines. You should know. You're bound to be the one that informed on me. I never did. I never did. Well, you'll be collecting your reward. Your blood money. The only reward I'll get is a rope round my neck. They've got two murders at sea against me. I tell you, I came here to hide with it just like you did. Well, I'm going to make a run for it. I'm going to get out of here. You're a bigger fool than I thought. Staying here like a rat in a trap. No. Mr. Boone, he lied me out just like he did you. He lied me to protect you. No, no, Let you can't with involve him, him anymore. Hang easy, Willie. Far from home, Lieutenant? Very far. And I don't like it. Well, you can always turn around and go back. I will. And I shall take William Crawford with me. Now, I know he's here, Mr. Boone, and I shall tell you how I know, so we won't waste time bandying words. That day in Charleston, Mr. Boone, I learned a bit later that your son was seen with a young seaman. Well, now, you've come a long way on a suspicion, Lieutenant. We have also had reports that there is a man, a seaman, living in Boonesboro. Now, unless I receive some cooperation, Mr. Boone, I have no choice but to conclude that you are harboring Mr. William Crawford, a mutineer against the authority of the British Crown. Do you deny, Mr. Boone, that there is a young seaman here named William Crawford? Lieutenant, the folks here in Boonesboro don't regard Willie as a criminal. Now, he's made a new life here and a host of friends. And Willie has told me that he did not take part in that mutiny, and I believe him. Now, I just can't let you haul him off and hang him. Sergeant McIntosh, go in and search that house. I don't think you ought to do that. You may have your orders, but that gives you no right to enter a man's house bearing arms and drag him out. You're on foreign soil, Lieutenant. <laughs> Don't shoot! Down! He's still alive, sir. William Crawford, I arrest you in the name of the king. No, I'm not. I'm not. You've got... Uh, uh. Look at his hand, sir. This man spent his life at sea, all right. Poor fellow. At least he won't have to run anymore. Mr. Boone! Mr. Boone! Don't look now. He's dead. Willie is dead. What do you mean, Willie is dead? I'm... Gonna have another drink? Good idea. What with the shock and all. Who are you? Uh, a friend of the deceased. A, a drinking companion, you might say, Lieutenant. Look at him. He's hardly in any condition to stand. I, I best get him off to bed. Hold on, Mr. Boone. I need proof. Some verification that the dead man is William Crawford. I don't know how I could help you, Lieutenant. Or why I should. What makes you doubt that's your man? The ship's records indicate that William Crawford was a much younger man. Oh? How young? About 16. About that young fellow's age. 
16, Lieutenant. Two years before the mast. Well, don't tell me the British Navy impresses 14-year-old boys. Well, I... Sir? Sir, I found this on the body. Hey, you can't take that. Uh, that's, that's his not... uh, friend's only keepsake. William Crawford. Amazing. It's engraved right on the back. And he wore it. And when you add that to the fact that his hands give him away as a seaman, and I can testify that his accent is British, so I don't know what else you need, Lieutenant. I suppose I could settle for that in good conscience. Well, now, that's important. A man's got to live with his conscience, and well, I think you're a very lucky man, Lieutenant. I'd say we've all been struck with a bit of luck, Mr. Boone. Poor fellow, we'll see that he gets a decent burial. Sergeant McIntosh. Up. Oh. Prepare to march. Here. I suppose he'd want you to have it. Sergeant. Good luck, Coyne. That's what Perkins called it. Yeah, it could be, Willie. Well, sometimes I like to think you have to give your luck a, a little push. Are you standing there staring a hole through me? Well, I didn't mean to. I'm just a mite surprised and pleased to see that old temptation fought out against you just this once. Temptation had nothing to do with it. The matter was taken out of my hands. Oh? Those Marines. One of them sat in it before I had a chance to stop him. Well, now, what'd that have to do with it? Well, it certainly wouldn't be right to return a used chair to Mr. Stogie, would it? Be downright dishonest. And since we have it here in the cabin and we can't take it back, it'd be wasteful not to use it. <sighs> but it's even more wasteful to sit here all day when there's supper to be made. Especially since we have a guest. A guest? Mm -hmm. Willie. We're having the trout he and Israel caught this afternoon. <laughs> 